Hi, and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at moving Lightroom users over to Photoshop. Now, if you're a Lightroom user and you're comfortable with Lightroom, moving over to Photoshop can be quite daunting. There's tons and tons of options in there that you're not accustomed to, and the general interface and the way that you work and your workflow is going to be different. So why would you want to use Photoshop if you're already accustomed to Lightroom? Well, there are lots of different reasons, and one of the most obvious is the fact that if you want to enhance or process your image beyond the capabilities of Lightroom, then you're going to have to go into something like Photoshop. But what you get there is an inherent problem. You've got to edit inside Lightroom, then you've got to output that into Photoshop and edit that file, and then you've got to round trip that back into Lightroom to carry on working. Well, if you've got an image like that, it's much quicker and easier to work inside Photoshop on its own. So with Adobe Camera Raw, we get all the power that we have inside the editing engine of Lightroom, but we also have all the functionality that Photoshop gives us to go beyond what Lightroom can do. So by using this edit inside Photoshop on its own and taking over the skills and knowledge that you have from Lightroom into Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop, you really can enhance your skills and ability and your image editing techniques. So throughout this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can take your skills over from Lightroom into Photoshop and work with Photoshop's Adobe Camera Raw to edit and process your images. So let's just jump into Photoshop and take a look at how we can start working inside ACR to edit and process images. Okay, so we've jumped into Photoshop now and we're ready to start processing our image in the same way that we would with Lightroom. So I've got the image that I want to work on open and all we need to do is come up to Filter and we're going to come down and choose Camera Raw Filter and click on there and that'll open up the Camera Raw Editor. So you can see that this looks a little bit like the develop module inside Lightroom and you'd be right in thinking that pretty much all of the same tools are in there as well as a couple of extra little features. Now things are laid out a little differently you have a lot of control options like you would in the develop module on the right hand side and we have some additional tools at the top so we have things like the radial filter the graduated filter the red eye removal transform and things along those lines as well as options for things like sampling colors and for also setting the white balance from our image you can see that if we take a look at the bottom, we've got the option to zoom in and zoom out. The file name information is in there, and we've got the preview option, so we can see cycling before, before and after. We can sort of flip things over, swap before and after settings, and so on. If we take a look on the right-hand side, you can see we've got the histogram at the top like we'd expect to see. But instead of having the individual panels like we have inside Lightroom, we now have those tabbed. So all the options are still there. You can see if we jump over, we've got the normal sort of uh, tone curve. We've got the option for all the sharpening and detail tools and so on. Jump over, we've got the HSL and grayscale options. So all the things you're used to seeing. So taking things over to, to Photoshop are not that difficult when you're kind of working inside this mode. So let's take a little look at some of the options we have available and how they work. So we start off by concentrating on the top toolbar. You can see we've got some normal options that you should be used to. We've got the zoom tool with the keyboard shortcuts. We've got the hand tool to allow us to move around if we're zoomed in. We can go through and we can set the white balance. Now with a lot of these tools, you'll have additional options if you click and hold down. So for example, if we take a look at the targeted adjustment tool, click and hold that down, you can see we've got the options for a parametric e uh, curve, hue, saturation, luminance, and grayscale mix. So we can choose from any of the options that are available there and start working with those. We've also got the option there for the transform tool and once we select that you'll see on the right hand side now we get a whole range of different options that allow us to fine tune the and adjust the transformation of the image. So if you want to work with the transform vertical, horizontal, all those options are there as well as a whole range of different options and you should again be accustomed to these because they're very very similar to what you have inside Lightroom. So let's just undo all of that. And we'll just go back onto the next tool. So you can see we've also got the spot removal tool. And when we choose spot removal, if we look on the right hand side, you can see we've got a range of context options in there. By default, it's set to heal, but we've got the option to clone as well. So if you are familiar with Photoshop's different sort of uh, spot removal tools like the heal and the clone, different options in there, we have those brought into Adobe Camera Raw inside, Light, uh, inside Photoshop. So again, it gives us more options again. You can adjust things like the size, the feather, the opacity, and so on. We've also got the red eye removal. 
I've got the graduated filter, the adjustment brush, and you can see the adjustment brush opens up all the normal options on the right hand side. So when you start working with this, you will find that even though the interface looks a little different, you will tend to find that you'll get accustomed to this very quickly because pretty much all the options are there. So let's just take a little look. Let's go back to the zoom tool. And let's take a look at the options we have available inside the right hand section and all the different tab sections we have in there. So we start at the top at the histogram. You can see things are broken down into the black shadows, exposure, highlights and whites, the kind of thing you'd normally expect. You've also got the option there in the top left and top right hand corners to have the clipping option show up on your image. So you can see we can click on there and that'll show us any clipped sort of shadows. So you can see these blue highlights, the clipped shadows. And we've got the same with highlights. So you can see you've got a bit of clipping up around the skyline. All simple, all the kind of thing you used to see in inside Lightroom itself. Then we've got all the same options. We've got the ability to change the white balance. So if you shoot in and you're editing a raw image, you'll have a whole range of options in there. If in this instance we're dealing with a JPEG file, you can see we've got the option to deal with the temperature, the tint, the exposure, and so on, in the same way that Lightroom sort of operates. We jump over, you can see we've got the option then for the tone curve. We've got two different tabs in there in the same way that we, we can switch between parametric, parametric and point curve mode inside Lightroom. We can do exactly the same in this. So if we jump over to point mode, for example, you can see we can easily click and add our points in there and start manipulating the tone curve to get exactly what we're looking for in exactly the same fashion we have inside Lightroom. So again, all very quick and easy. Now the one thing we don't have in here is the ability to turn these panels on and off. So we kind of, we don't have that ability to make some edits and then take a look at the before and after those edits by disabling those particular panels, which is a bit of a shame. And it'd be nice if, if Adobe did sort of bring that in. And if I'm wrong and that is actually in there, please pop it in the comment section below and show me exactly where to get that information from, because that'd be really cool. Okay, so let's just reset this back to where it was. And then just move on to the next panel. So you can see we've got all the sharpening tools. Now, one thing I will say is that Photoshop for me is better at sharpening than Lightroom. I've always found Lightroom to be a little bit sort of hit and miss when it comes to sharpening your image. So I will generally tend to take my images over into, Light into Photoshop to actually do the final sharpening before I do any print kind of work. But like I say, it's one of those things that, for me, Lightroom isn't the best for that. So, like I say, you have all the normal options in here. You have the luminance, so you can deal with any noise reduction you want to deal with, as well as sharpening. We've also got the options in exactly the same way. If we hold the Alt key down, you can see we can see exactly what's going on before we start sharpening. So those modifier keys are still working the same inside Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw as they do inside Lightroom. So that's pretty cool as well. So let's just drop that back to where it was. Next up, we jump over, you can see we've got the HSL and grayscale options. So we can click, convert this to a black and white image, and then start editing the colors uh, to deal with the way that the black and white is represented. And the same goes if we're dealing with the HSL slider, we can jump over between all the different tabs inside there. Again, unlike Lightroom, we don't have the ability to have all three tabs visible at the same time. But, you know, it's a simple thing. The interface is slightly different, but it's giving you all those same options. They're all still there. Next up, we've got the split toning, and again, you can see exactly the same as what you've got inside Lightroom. Next up, we've got the lens correction, so we can go through and we can deal with the green, the purple amount, the defringing, and so on. And we have some additional controls inside this that you can see we can actually adjust additional points that we can't do inside Lightroom. Again, really, really cool to deal with. The vignetting in this example is actually in the different place. We've got that under the lens correction where we don't have that in the same position inside Lightroom itself. We have that under the effects section. And jumping over to the effects section, you can see we still have the post crop vignette in there as well. So we can easily come in and we can choose the type of vignette we want, the amount of vignette in. So you can see we've got the priority color, priority paint overlay, and so on. So we can control the way the vignette is displayed in the same way that we can inside Lightroom. We also have the dehaze option, which gives us a ton of control over the image and could be used way beyond just dealing with haze in your images. And I've already got a video inside Lightroom that shows you how you can use that for more than just dealing with hazy images. Uh, I'll link that in the description below, so check that out if you're interested. Next up, we've got the camera calibration. You can see we've got options in there to deal with the camera calibration. So if we want to do something simple like the teal and orange look, we can easily do that by adjusting these. And there we go. We quickly have a teal and orange look applied to our image. Very simple, normal kind of thing. Everything you're accustomed to inside Lightroom itself. But finally, we have the preset section. Now this works 
very similar fashion to what you have inside Lightroom with the exception it's not quite as functional if you ask me it's not quite as easy to deal with but it's all still there so if I want to sort of pull up any of the presets that I've created you can see I can click and they will be applied immediately we can create new presets and so on. You can output these and you can save them and import them and so on. And I will be doing a dedicated video on exactly how you can create your own presets, output those, load them back in, save them, share them, whatever you kind of want to do. So keep an eye out for that. Hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date when all these new things come out and you will be able to see exactly how to use presets inside Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw. Okay, so we take a look now at the bottom strip. We've got the options to allow us to zoom in. So you can see we've got the ability to jump straight into a particular size. We can jump back out of that, jump through any of those preset sizes. We also have a range of options that allow us to preview the before and after image. You can see if we take a look at the right hand side, we've got the ability to choose between the before and after. We can use the keyboard shortcut of Q or we can click on the little icon. If we click on the icon, you can see we have a range of different options. We can even open up preview preferences and set even more options on exactly how we want this preview to be displayed. We then have a range of different options that allow us to cycle through the before and after and so on. And again, with keyboard shortcuts, so you can see we can flip that around. We can do a range of different things inside that. We can flip them in the opposite way. We can have different previews. And we can take a look at exactly what we want this to look like before and after and so on. We zoom in, both will zoom in and the same with zooming out. We can pan around on those. So we just change to the hand. You can see we can move around and it'll show us the before and after exactly the same on both of those previews. And there you go. That pretty much wraps up using your Lightroom skills and taking those over into Photoshop. Hopefully what you've seen with Adobe Camera Raw is that the skills and knowledge that you picked up when working inside Lightroom mean that you can transpose those into Photoshop without any real problem. You have the benefit then that once you've done your editing inside Adobe Camera Raw, you can then open that image up into Photoshop and carry on editing with any of the other, other functions. So this means that as you get more and more comfortable with working with Photoshop and taking advantage of the extra tools that gives us, you don't have to round trip from Lightroom into Photoshop to make your edits, then from Photoshop back out into Lightroom. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up this week's video. Hopefully what you've seen is that it's not that difficult to take the skills that you've honed inside Lightroom and transition those over into Photoshop's Camera Raw, where you can then start to go beyond the limitations that Lightroom inherently has, and you can start using all the power and functionality that Photoshop gives you to go beyond the basics. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else on the channel, pop those in the comments section below. And until next time, take care.